Our next lesson is about solving multi-step equations. So we are going to have three types of equations that we have today. Take a look at our first type. You'll notice that on the left side of the equation, there are two terms that have an x in them. Whenever you see that, I would like to caution you against the number one mistake I see students making. So the number one mistake I see students making is that they decide that in order to solve this, they would like to subtract the 10x from both terms that have an x. Unfortunately, when you do that, you are subtracting from the same side. So if you were to subtract something from two things, it would have to be from both sides of the equal sign. So keep in mind that this is 100% wrong. So please be careful about that. So let's go ahead and do things the right way now. And whenever you see something with two x's on the same side of an equal sign, your first step is always going to be to combine like terms. So our like terms are our 12x and our 10x because they both have an x. They both have the same variable. So we will combine like terms. So this step we're going to combine like terms. And when you do 12x plus 10x, you will get 22x. Once you do that, on the left-hand side, you're going to be left with plus 14. Right-hand side, you just still have an 80. Once you do that first step, you actually are going to follow the same steps that you used when you had the previous examples, which was to subtract the 14 from both sides. Don't do the 22 first because otherwise you'll get something really, really horrible. You're going to be left on the left side with the 22x. 14 minus 14 is 0, so you can cancel that out because 22x plus 0 is just going to be 22x. 80 minus 14 is 66. Your last step is to get rid of the 22 with the x. Since it's 22 times x, we will divide both sides by 22. On your left-hand side, you're going to be left with 1x, or just x. Your right-hand side, you are going to be left with x equals 3. And as with the previous examples, I do recommend that if you're on a test or a quiz, you go back, you substitute that 3 back in. So I'll do that for the first one. And if you want to do that for all of them, you can, just to check and make sure you get things right. So this is our checking step. And you'll find that when you do that, you get 36 plus 14 plus 30 equals 80. 36 plus 14 is 50. 50 plus 30 is going to be equal to 80. And that means that our answer of x equals 3 is correct. So we're good on that one. So for all the rest of the problems, I'm not going to show the checking process, but I do recommend that you do it, especially if you're taking a test or a quiz, because when you do want a test or a quiz, it's very, very important that you check and you make sure you didn't make any silly mistakes. For our next two problems, I would actually like you to go ahead and pause and try these two on your own once I get them written down. So give these a try. Pause. If you're really, really certain that you got them right, just fast forward all the way to the end when I have the answers down. If you're not quite sure, give them a try. See if you can get them. And so go ahead and try them. Okay, so for number two, our first step is going to be to combine our like terms. 5x minus 3x is going to be 2x. We keep our plus 3 there. 
and it's equal to negative 7. Then your next step is to subtract 3 from both sides. You get 2x equals negative 10. When you divide both sides by 2, your answer is x equals negative 5. For number 3, it's the same process. To be honest, a lot of people really don't like having it written like that with a 9 first. If you see that and it really bugs you, you can rewrite it as 7x minus 13x minus 21 equals 9. You can feel free to do that if you want to. It's still the same problem. You're allowed to do that. However, if you did it without moving it around, that's fine also. So 7x minus 13x for 7 and 13, they have opposite signs, so you're going to subtract 13 and 7, that gives you 6. Since 13 is the bigger number out of 17 and 13, we're going to make it negative. We get negative 6x. You bring down your minus 21, and it's equal to 9. Then you add 21 to both sides. That gives you negative 6x equals 30. Your last step is to divide both sides by negative 6, and coincidentally, our answer for this one is also x equals negative 5. So our second type of problem for these, this section has to do with using the distributed property. So if you remember, the distributed property means that if you have something like this 4 right here, you are going to take that 4, multiply it by everything inside those parentheses. So we're going to get 3 plus 4x plus 20 equals 31. So now, if you look carefully on the left-hand side of this equals sign, there are like terms. Even though there's only one thing with a variable, the 3 and the 20 are actually like terms. When you add those two together, you will get 23. From there, you're going to bring down your plus 4x. You bring down your equals 31. So now we're going to subtract 23 from both sides. When you do that, on the left-hand side, you just get 0 for 23 minus 23. 0 plus 4x is 4x. On the right-hand side, 31 minus 23 is 8. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. Our answer for that is x equals 2. So I want you to try the next one on your own as soon as I have it written down. Go ahead and pause. This one I think is slightly harder, but give it a try. See if you can figure this one out. So our first step with this problem involves the distributive property. Or if you're one of those people who says, I really hate having that 27 on the left hand side, you can move it around. That is not a necessary step but you can do it if you want to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to distribute this negative 3. Don't forget that there's a negative in there. We distribute this whole entire thing to everything in the parentheses. So you bring down your 3x. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Negative 3 times negative 2x is going to be positive 6x. So just be very careful when distributing. If there is a minus in front of the parentheses, that also gets distributed. So that's a big mistake I see people making. So just make sure that when you did it, you made that 6x positive. So then the rest of this problem is very similar to the other four that we've done. You're going to combine your like terms. 3x plus 6x is 9x. You bring down your minus 18 going to be equal to 27. This is going to be followed by adding 18 to both sides. When you do that, you get 9x equals 45. Then you divide both sides by 9. 
your answer is x equals 5. So we have one more type of problem, and it does involve fractions. So for number 6, there are actually two ways to solve this problem. The first way is distributing the 3 over 2 to both the x and the minus 5. However, there's actually a slightly easier way to do this one. So I recommend doing it the second way because it involves fewer fraction operations, so you're less likely to make mistakes. So if you look at the 3 over 2, one thing you can do to get rid of that is by multiplying it by its reciprocal, which is 2 over 3. Don't forget, when you do something to one side of an e equation, you have to do the same thing to the other. So we're going to also multiply the 6 times the 2 over 3. So now, a really wonderful thing is going to happen on the left side. We're going to cross-cancel our 2 and 2, cross-cancel our 3 and 3. You will just end up with 1 times x minus 5, which gives you x minus 5. Suddenly, the left-hand side is a lot easier. Right-hand side, it's not as pleasant, but luckily, you can cross-cancel a few things out. So 6 and 3 will cancel out and give us 2 and 1. We're left with 2 over 1 times 2 over 1, which gives us 4 over 1, or 4. Our last step on this problem is to add 5 to both sides, and our answer will be x equals 9. So one more problem and then we're done. The last problem I want you to do on your own. So we have 2 fifths times 9 minus 2x equals negative 14. So pause and do this one on your own. As with the previous problem, Really, the easiest way to do this is to get rid of the 2 fifths by multiplying both sides by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 over 5 is going to be 5 over 2. So on your left-hand side, everything is going to cancel out, and you're just left with 9 minus 2x. On your right-hand side, you can cross-cancel your 2 and your 14, you end up with negative 7 times 5, which gives us negative 35. From there, you're going to subtract 9 from both sides. When you do that, you end up getting negative 2x equals negative 44. So your last step is to get rid of that negative 2 with the x by dividing both sides by negative 2. And your answer will end up being x equals positive 22.